Plato and Aristotle, they both have dedicated their thinking to the value and the purpose of literature. It must be said that because Plato and Aristotle they have two different view on, views on morality, and because literature it is strictly linked to emotions, uh, therefore their view on the value and purpose of uh, literature uh, is different on the basis of their uh, theory of morality. We could um, summarize their differences uh, extremely by saying that Plato's morality is based on the idea of good, while Aristotle's moral it's founded, it's based on happiness as the aim of uh, man. Plato and Aristotle uh, treat abundantly uh, emotions, uh, although they um, attribute them different roles or they see them in a different way. Uh, of course, in Plato's, the expression of emotion is confined to a minimum. On the other hand, um, in Aristotle, emotions are treated as in the amount of feeling in it. One can have too much feeling or too little feeling, and both excess are um, devious from the uh, optimal um, happiness. Now, uh, according to the theory of ideas in Plato, this world is an imitation of another one, the one of the real things. But then art representation becomes an imitation of the imitation. So, on this basis, uh, Plato says uh, poetry has to be dismissed. Because Aristotle do not believe in this um, existence of the ideas, although he accepts the universal, he brings um, poetry, representation, uh, to a dignity because it attributes several aspects uh, related to knowledge and to uh, also a happy life. This also, uh, this attitude these differences between uh, Plato and Aristotle uh, establishes also a different hierarchy uh, of the, the disciplines. Uh, so, for Plato, we have philosophy, history, and poetry in that order, while in Aristotle, philosophy ranks first, then poetry, and then history. Now, let's see how Aristotle defines uh, tragedy. Tragedy is a representation of an action of a superior kind, grand and complete in itself, presented in embellished language, in distinct forms in different parts, performed by actors rather than told by a narrator, affecting through pity and fear the purification of such emotions. The most difficult word in this description or definition is the word purification, in Greek, katharsis. But let's see now the six things that are necessary for a tragedy. And they are the story, the moral element, the style, the ideas, the staging, and the music. The geniality of... Um, tragic poem or are, uh, is based on two elements which in Greek are mutos and ethos. Mutos um, is the plot, we could say. Mutos is the moral element and ethos is the moral character. You see, mutos is the story in which the moral element appears and Ethos is the moral character uh, in which the, 
the moral conflict uh, appears. What makes a good hero, a good tragic hero? Uh, the tragic hero should be a person um, who's basically good, but in some, uh, at a certain stage of his life, it falls into a serious error. The characters of the tragedy must have uh, the, qualities, the qualities appropriate to them consistently throughout the drama. Now, what happens in the tragedy is not what in reality happens, but what would happen or, or what necessarily would happen. Aristotle um, stressed the point that uh, the most important element in the tragedy uh, is the story, and that the characters are actually created for the sake of the story. The, the plot should have, like, a, a must have a beginning, a middle, and end, right? And they should be sufficiently short and simple so that the spectator. Uh, would be able to retain uh, its details in mind. So, the concept of unity in the play. In fact, there should be a single significant action on which the whole plot turns, and not like um, a, set, a set of episodes connected only by a common hero. hero. Aristotle tell us that in a typical tragedy, the story gradually gets more complicated until a turning point is reached, which Aristotle calls peripeteia. This is the moment at which the apparently fortunate hero falls to disaster, perhaps through a discovery, an agnorisis. He might come into possession of some crucial but Heater to a known piece of information. This reversal marks the end of the complication, the, the esis of the plot, which is followed by its explication, lucis, in which the twists earlier introduced are gradually unraveled. So, the first important, the two important elements are story and morality of the characters. The third is the third element is called, uh, in Greek, dianoia. Dianoia are the thoughts conveyed by the dialogues of the characters. It is the intellectual uh, element. It's the expression of the person in the drama. And compared to the um, ethos, the moral character of the drama comes out uh, from uh, their actions. So, Dianoia is the intellectual aspect, it's the moral intelligence, while the actions of the characters bring up the moral uh, character. It's expressed in the actions. Of course, importance is given to uh, the style, so the literary quality of its expression. I remind you that for Aristotle a tragedy does not necessarily need to be represented on a stage. The, a, a tragedy, a tragic poem can be fully understood and enjoyed just by reading. So style is an important element. The fifth element is called opsis. Opsis is actually uh, the appearance, the visual appearance. Opsis is to do with the, 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 the viewing, so visual appearance. Uh, the sixth element is music, which is treated quite uh, briefly in the poetics. 